How you doing today? Good, how you doing? So you got the national anthem coming up mm -hmm. and a halftime show. Mm -hmm. I gotta ask, when I see the national anthem, I don't know it. Um, you know, and it's <laughs> so, when I watch you all sing, I get nervous for you all. Um, what's the secret to mastering the national anthem? Sing it 200 million times before you have to actually perform it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you put your own spin on it, or you kind of just go like go for the basics to make sure like you hit all the like. No, right I have to actually. I mean, I absolutely add my sauce to it. What does MSG mean to you as a performer? Oh man, MSG is like the spot. You know, if you hit the garden, you made it. You know, I feel like just with so many iconic legends that have performed here and so many historical moments that have happened here right in the heart of New York City, you know, it's it's definitely one for the books. Why do you feel, do you feel that, do you feel it special here when you're here in your hometown versus like other arenas or is it like, does it all kind of start to look the same sometimes? Um, being a native New Yorker, it does feel special because we all know how New Yorkers could get. Yeah. <laughs> so if you can receive love from New York, you can receive love anywhere. So it's, it's, it feels extra good, hmm. you know, to come home and, and get a lot of love. So when we think about basketball teams, we're always thinking about what makes a um, what makes a good teammate, right? So it's like you have to have the the perfect five that are on the court. When you're in the studio, you have a lot of collaborators sometimes. So that's mm -hmm. producers, engineers, or someone else singing, writing. What makes a good teammate in the studio? What makes a good teammate in the studio, I would say... And know that I'm going to ask you what makes a bad teammate, too. So <laughs> we'll start, yeah. I would say um, a person that is honest, a person, you don't want somebody in the studio saying, yeah, it sounds great, because they're scared to tell you it sounds terrible. Mm -hmm. um, people that are, well, for me, I need good ears around me. I need clean engineers that are fast, so if I forget a melody, they already recorded it. You know what I mean? Um, good energy. Like, when you're recording and you're in the studio, you don't want anybody sleep. You don't want anybody, like... Do people fall asleep in the studio? Not in my sessions. Okay, I was about to say, like, <laughs> they're out of here, yeah. Right. But just overall good energy, you know, willing to throw out ideas and just be creative. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not one of those that are kind of like closed, I'm like, I have to do everything all by myself. I like, you know, input, mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah. What makes a bad studio teammate? A bad studio teammate is when you are not quick you're not in tune with what's going on so like if I say a line and I tell the engineer go back to when I said such and such and he doesn't know and he has to search you know in the pro tools to find it that's killing time it's killing my vibe and it's like come on son I mean come on you what are you doing yeah, what are you yeah. blowing yeah, like what are you yeah. doing um so I don't like that a lot of people don't like going to the studio with me because I have the heat on like 90 Oh, so you're for one the of those. yeah, I'm definitely one of those. Why? I got candles happening. I have the heat on. The guys are like, "Oh my God, it's shots! I can't take this." Yeah. But I like it. I like to be in like my PJs and my socks. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just you know. So it's kind of relaxing, but also very like, comfortable. Okay. Absolutely. I'm glad you brought up PJs because you know when you sit courtside or even when you go to a game in general, but specifically when you sit courtside. How important is what I like to call the shoe flex? Like, because everyone, <laughs> you know, here they can't see what we got on. Right. But when you sit courtside, people can see your footwear. Absolutely. It's very important. Mm. I think it's so much more stress on a female because you want to look fly, but you still want to keep it a little sporty. Okay. You know what I mean? So you got to find that right combo. The good thing is, at least you're sitting down. Mm -hmm. So that takes, you know, Women, we have to preserve the toe energy. So I didn't want to bring it up, but I'm glad you brought it up. The toe energy. Let's walk through yes, the toe energy. Yes, preserve the toe bit. energy so we can sit down. I'm one of those that takes my shoes off, so I'll probably hide my feet behind like the popcorn box or something or the mm -hmm. nachos, so they can't see. Yeah. But um, yeah. It's sort of like being on the court, right? Like like heels and everything, it could be almost as stressful as playing the full game. You want to do like the, the ice bath, put your feet in there. Oh my gosh, yeah. definitely. Toe energy. Toe energy has to be preserved. Yeah. Yeah. What about courtside etiquette, right? Because I see people sit courtside sometimes and there's a person with all the food, there's a person mm -hmm. that's tapping you all the time. What's a courtside violation? You know, you don't want to get too close to the game either. Right. What's the like rules for like etiquette? Violation is when you spill popcorn over on your neighbor. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. It's greasy. You got yeah. nachos and cheese sliding out your box. I don't like that. <laughs> um, keep enough space, but keep the camaraderie. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's okay to lean when your player makes the shot, yeah. you know, and get excited and be into the game. Um, 
And you have to try to keep your texting to a minimum. If you're not really interested, don't let the cameras catch you, like, you know, yeah, that's not right. into the game. Yeah. Um, and that's it. Like, I'm not, I'm not too bougie. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, not if you're taking off PJs and everything. No, that's just the right level. I gotta ask, um, I remember Coach Carter, mm -hmm. right? Like, basketball flick all about high school. Was basketball big in your high school? I was a cheerleader. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So I always, well, I guess maybe you won't be able to answer this then because I think about like how important it was in high school to where you were sitting, right? Like mm -hmm. kind of like the vibe you had. You had to sit on your team side. You had to mm -hmm. have like the right spot. But can you play back the importance of like what it was as a cheerleader then? And do you still feel like that energy when you're sitting like at a basketball game, like you kind of want to go out there, hit the maneuvers? Or are you like, you got to preserve your toe energy? <laughs> Just. Well, back then it was very different. You know, I had a boyfriend on the team. So it was, it was uh, routine to wear his hoodie you know, to the game. Um, and you know, you have to be into it. We did our cheers and we looked cute and all that good stuff. Now it's different. Like, like you said already, I'm not wearing anybody's hoodie. Mm. <laughs> not on this team. Yeah. Um, and yes, it's, it's a different look. I'm not, you know, I'm not a cheerleader. I'm, Watching a game. So Shanti, that's pretty much I want to know. What else you have coming up? What you working on? Uh, a little bit of everything. Very excited about the new music coming. Mm -hmm. um, Metro Boomin and I are working on a joint venture together. I will be putting out um, an EP very soon. Okay. Very excited about it. Oh, and I'm actually collaborating, um, doing a clothing line, which will be launching later this year. Uh, myself, Ashanti with Miss Circle. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really, really cool. It's kind of chic, sexy, and it fits all the curves, right? So if you're sitting courtside, this is the fit you're going to want to wear. Exactly. You feel me? Yeah. Ashanti, thank you for your thank time. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>